Hi, this is Dr. K from iMedical School, and today I want to begin our series regarding the brachial plexus. Make sure to check out our other free educational videos at our YouTube channel, iMedical School. Follow us on Twitter at iMedSchool and Facebook at iMedical School to stay up to date on our most recent videos, practice questions, and med bites of the week. In this series, we're going to review the anatomy of the brachial plexus and connect how the anatomy plays a role in the physiology of our body. The brachial plexus is a group of nerves that originate from the spinal cord, extend across the neck, course under the first rib, and into the axilla or armpit. These nerves are responsible for multiple musculoskeletal functions of the arm, chest, and neck. The reason the brachial plexus is so important is that damage to various points in the brachial plexus can lead to specific injuries based on what muscles the affected nerves supply. We divide the brachial plexus into roots, trunks, divisions, cords, and branches. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the segment of the brachial plexus called the roots. The brachial plexus begins at the cervical roots C5, C6, C7, C8, and thoracic nerve T1. These are nerves originating from the anterior or ventral rami, and these nerves carry both sensory as well as motor nerves. Remember, in the cervical region, each nerve originates just above its corresponding vertebra, but this changes when transitioning from the cervical to the thoracic area. To clarify, the C5 nerve passes through the C4, C5 neural foramina with the C4 vertebra above and the C5 vertebra below. The pattern changes for C8. There is no C8 vertebra, so the C8 root courses through the C7 and T1 neural foramina, and T1 courses between the T1 T2 neural foramina. These series of nerves course through the cervical axillary canal that is bordered by the scapula posteriorly, clavicle anteriorly, and medially by the first rib. There are three nerves that are created early on in the brachial plexus. They are called the dorsal scapular nerve, the long thoracic nerve, and the first intercostal nerve. The dorsal scapular nerve consists of motor and sensory fibers of root C5. The dorsal scapular nerve passes through the scalene muscles and innervates the rhomboid muscles. They are called rhomboid muscles because they are rhomboid shaped. The rhomboid muscles consist of two muscles called rhomboid major and rhomboid minor. They lie under the trapezius muscle. The rhomboids arrive from the spinous processes of C7 to T5 and insert into the medial border of the scapula. The job of the rhomboid muscles is to pull the scapula medially towards the spine. In addition, the rhomboids allow the rotation of the scapula and holds the scapula to the thoracic wall. In addition, the dorsal scapular nerve innervates the levator scapula muscle. The levator scapula arises from the posterior tubercles of C1 to C4 vertebra. The levator scapula inserts into the superior part of the medial border of the scapula and aids in elevating the scapula. Dorsal scapular nerve injury is very rare, and given how uncommon it is, an isolated injury of the dorsal scapular nerve can be easily missed. Given the dorsal scapular nerve courses through the scalene muscles, heavy weight lifting that leads to enlargement of the scalene muscles can lead to impingement of the dorsal scapular nerve. Injury to this nerve leads to a burning pain in the medial or inner aspect of the scapula. The long thoracic nerve is the second nerve that originates from this segment of the brachial plexus. The long thoracic nerve consists of motor fibers of C5, C6, and C7. It innervates the serratus anterior muscle. The long thoracic nerve passes through the cervical axillary canal and flows in front of the serratus anterior. It is a very superficial muscle, making it prone to injury from a direct blow if the arms are outstretched. In addition, surgeries like radical mastectomies with lymph node dissection can inadvertently damage the long thoracic nerve. The job of the serratus anterior muscle is that it holds the scapula against the thorax. 
when the long thoracic nerve is damaged, it results in what is called a winged scapula. What happens is that if someone with a long thoracic nerve injury lifts their arm forward or if they push against a wall with an outstretched hand, you will see the scapula on that side stick out of the back much farther than the unaffected side. The last nerve we will briefly discuss is the first intercostal nerve. The first intercostal nerve is a branch off of T1. The first intercostal nerve runs along the first intercostal space to create the first anterior cutaneous branch, though this may be missing in some people. The intercostal nerves supply the intercostal muscles between the ribs and provide sensory information from the peritoneum that lines the inside of the thoracic cavity. Well, that was the first video in our series about the brachial plexus. In the next video, we will tackle trunks and the rest of the brachial plexus in the next several videos. If you like this video, give it a like. Make sure to share this video with your friends and classmates. If you have any questions or comments, place them down below. And most importantly, subscribe. This is Dr. K from iMedical School, and I'll see you next time.